This is a video lesson for Module 5, Lesson 15. The Lesson 15 learning target is I can find common units or number of units to compare to fractions. So in this lesson, we're going to be continuing our learning about comparing fractions and building a few more strategies to help us compare fractions. So let's go ahead and take a look at problem number one. And let's see some of the challenges that we're going to be addressing here in lesson 15. So problem number one asks us to compare 3 fourths and 4 fifths. From our learning in lesson 14, we know that it's very helpful when comparing fractions to have the two fractions either have similar numerators or similar denominators. So our first step is to see if we can uh, multiply the numerator and the denominator of one of the fractions to equal the numerator and the denominator of the other fraction. So let's see if we can do that now. If we look at 3 and fourths, we can't multiply 3 by anything to get 4, and we can't multiply 4 by anything to get 5. Um, and so we're kind of stuck. And so the new strategy we're learning here in Lesson 15 is what happens when we run into this problem? How can we go about still comparing fractions even though we can't change one to have a similar numerator or denominator as the second. And so what the solution ends up being is we have to actually change both of the fractions. We have to convert both of the fractions and decompose them in different ways so that they have the same denominator. So let me show you what that looks like. And I'm going to be demonstrating by using a tape diagram as well. So I'm going to draw a couple tape diagrams here make a couple tape diagrams here. And in the first tape diagram, I'm going to represent 3 fourths. And I'm going to partition this uh, vertically here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in 3 fourths. Um, actually, let's use red. And for the second tape diagram, I'm going to represent 4 fifths. And I'm going to partition that horizontally. So let me go ahead and do that now. Oops, don't want red. All right, so I just need to fill in now four of those fifths. Okay. And so I have three fourths partitioned vertically here and four fifths partitioned horizontally. And so the trick to making sure that both of these fractions are rewritten or decomposed to have the same denominator is to partition them the opposite direction based on the opposite fraction. So let me show you what I mean. So for 3 fourths here, I'm going to partition 3 fourths horizontally into fifths because that's what the other fraction has is fifths. So I'm going to partition 3 fourths horizontally into fifths. Here I go. Okay, so I've gone ahead and partitioned them horizontally into fifths. And for my 4 fifths, I'm going to partition them vertically into fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So uh, now if you were to count up each of the individual parts of both of these area models here, uh, you would see that we have created similar units. Both of these fractions are now represented in twentieths. If we count up the shaded region of our three-fourths area model here, we see that we have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen twentieths. And if we count up the shaded regions of our 4 fifths area model here, we see we have 4, 8, 12, 16 twentieths. So now we can compare these two very easily because we've created two fractions that have similar units. They have the same denominator. And so it's clear to see that 15 twentieths is less than 16 twentieths. And so 3 fourths is less than 4 fifths. So to summarize the strategy here in problem one, we had two fractions, one right here and one right here, and we couldn't change one of them to have the same numerator or denominator as the other. So we ended up changing both of them 
uh, and to have similar units to have into 20ths. And we showed that decomposition with an area model. Then that allowed us to easily compare the two fractions since they were written with similar units in 20ths, which gave us our answer that 3 fourths was less than 4 fifths. One other way to show this decomposition and comparison is simply by rewriting the fractions with the same units. And we do that by taking the original fraction, or one of the original fractions, and then we multiply the numerator and the, de the denominator by the denominator of the second fraction. So in this case, we'd multiply 3 and 4 by 5, because that's the denominator of the second fraction. And when we do that, we get 15 twentieths, just like we did with our area model. And then we can go ahead and do that same thing, except for this time we're going to take the second fraction and multiply it by the denominator of the first fraction. So we're going to multiply 4 fifths and take the numerator and multiply that by 4, and then the denominator and multiply that by 4, and then get 16 twentieths. So essentially what we've done is we've uh, taken both the fractions and multiplied it by the opposite denominator. So you can see that we have 4's here, and that's from this 4, and we have 5's here, and that's from this 5 right here. So that strategy of changing both of the fractions and to have common units and making it easier to compare is a really helpful one when we run into fractions like this. And we can continue to use that strategy here for problem two. So in this problem, we're asked to compare 5 thirds and 7 fourths. Uh, if right off the bat, I can recognize that both of these fractions are actually greater than 1. So they are, uh, we would call these improper fractions when the numerator is larger than the denominator. So these are fractions that are greater than 1. So what I can do is I can actually decompose these fractions to make it a little bit easier. I can pull out one whole, and so if it pulled out one whole from 5 thirds, that would be 3 thirds, and then I'm left with 2 thirds here. And I can do the seven, same thing with 7 fourths. I can pull out 4 fourths, which is one whole, and then I'm left with 3 fourths. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to now just compare uh, two-thirds to three-fourths, because both of these have one whole, um, and so now I'm just comparing two-thirds to three-fourths. So since I'm comparing two-thirds to three-fourths, I'm going to go ahead and use that same multiplication strategy I just talked about in problem one, where I'm going to take the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction and multiply it by the denominator of the second fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So two-thirds... is the same as 8 twelfths. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the other fraction of 3 fourths. I'm going to take 3 fourths and I'm going to multiply it by the denominator of the other fraction, which in this case is 3. So 3 fourths equals 3 times 3. So I'm finding an equivalent fraction in twelfths. That's what I'm doing. So I get 9 twelfths. And so since 8 twelfths is less than 9 twelfths, and 8 twelfths was originally, sorry, let me rephrase that. Since 8 twelfths is equivalent to 2 thirds, we would say that 1 and 2 thirds is less than 1 and 3 fourths because we determined that 8 twelfths was less than 9 twelfths. Therefore, 2 thirds was less than 3 fourths. So we can use that same strategy of multiplying uh, and finding common units to compare even when we have improper fractions like we did in this problem. So let's go ahead and move on to the last problem here, problem three here. And this is just going to give us another opportunity to practice uh, the strategy of finding common units through multiplication in order to compare. But this time we have some pretty large numbers. We're dealing, dealing with fifths and twelfths. So let's go ahead and get started here, and we're going to try to find common units for both of these fractions. So I'm going to start with by taking 3 fifths, and I'm going to multiply that by the denominator of the second fraction, which in this case is 12. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the numerator and denominator by 12. So 3 times 12 is going to give me 36, 
And 5 times 12 is going to give me 60. So it looks like one common unit that these two fractions have up here is actually 60th. So I can uh, decompose and rewrite both of the fraction in terms of 60th. So I'm going to do the same thing now with 8 twelfths. And I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator of 8 twelfths by the denominator of the first fraction, which was 5. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So that's going to be 8 twelfths, and I'm multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 5's. So 8 times 5 is 40, and 12 times 5 is 60. So you might have noticed that when we do this strategy, the denominators for both problems when we're multiplying are actually the same thing. I have 5, tw five times 12 here, and this right here I have 12 times 5, which is actually the same thing. So we're always going to end up with similar units on the bottom. So now that we have uh, similar units, we can go ahead and compare them really easily. So it's easy to see that 36 sixtieths is less than 40 sixtieths. Now since 36 sixtieths is equivalent to 3 fifths, this means that 3 fifths is also less than 8 twelfths because 8 twelfths was also equivalent to 40 sixtieths. So even when we have larger numbers as our de uh, denominators, we can still use that same multiplication strategy to figure out and compare two fractions. So at this point, you should be able to answer all the questions in the lesson 15 problem set. But as always, if you get stuck and you need a little refresher, you can come back and rewatch any parts of the video and hopefully that'll help you out. So thanks for watching.